We're going to read the text in a moment, but um, uh, it's Rosh Hashanah, and I, um, I, I shared uh, humorously, according to some, about, about this experience that I've been having with a shofar, and, um, and I have my shofar here that was given to me by a beloved brother and sister in the church. In fact, I have a couple of them, but this has become my favorite one. And uh, I blow it, apparently, a lot. Uh, yeah, there's no time limits on when I blow it. Uh, for those of you that are my neighbors, if you're wondering what that sound is, it's just me. And I'm blowing my shofar. I'll blow it at midnight. I don't, I don't go crazy. I just blow a couple blasts out the, black, out the back door. And um, somebody said, oh, you're sanctifying your neighborhood. And uh, I, don't, I don't know about all that. But tonight on Rosh Hashanah, or the, the, the Feast of Trumpets, it's called, at the end of tonight's message, which is rather intense, uh, we're going to go ahead and blow the, the shofar. And there, I, there is a right way of doing it. And if we were Jews, we would probably be following that. But, and I know some of you are Jews or completed Jews or Messianic Jews, so hopefully you won't be offended. I, I read somewhere, we're trying to figure it out. I guess there's a hundred blasts. So if it's five people blow 20 times or 20 people blow five times, that would be a hundred. And um, I, I don't know, we're, we're going to turn it loose at the end of the service. Uh, what's interesting is this text. And uh, I made a mistake this morning in my preaching. I referenced the... The rapture with one of the feasts that's actually not, not to be related to. Really, the, the rapture is related to, if you're going to relate it to one of the feasts, and all the feasts represent something, things, many things, but the rapture would be related to tonight, this feast. Do you want to say something to me? I'll be right back. Would you talk amongst yourselves? Amen. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Pastor Karen. Second Thessalonians chapter two. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And are being gathered together to him. Everybody say being gathered together to him. We ask you brothers. To not be easily unsettled. Or alarmed. By some prophecy report or letter. Supposed to have come from us. Saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. But that day will not come. Until the rebellion occurs. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped. So that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. And now you know what is holding him back. Hmm. So that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth. And destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan. Displayed all kinds of counterfeit miracle signs and wonders. And in every sort of evil that deceivers, deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. 
What a passage. Move in power in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We do have notes for you. The signs of his return. So I thought it'd be appropriate to preach on his return and the rapture. And then at the end, what many scholars believe, at the trumpet sound on the Feast of Trumpets will be the rapture. So I thought, I'll preach, I'll teach, and then we'll all blow the trumpet. And who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe this is it tonight. Oh, oh, oh. oh, the kids aren't coloring now. No, they're not. Everybody paying attention. All right. Do you have notes? Very good. Fill those in as we move along. And uh, I think my wife just called me Don Ho. I, I think I heard of Don Ho. I'm not sure who he is, but I do know what Hanaho is, and Hanaho means do it again, so we're going to, let's, let's go. Uh, what a passage. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians, Apostle Paul mention, mentions the rapture, and we've had some um, well-meaning clowns uh, argue that the rapture is a word that's not used in the Bible, and that's true. It's not. It's just like the Trinity, the word Trinity is not used in the Bible. It was coined by an early church father. And rapture is not, not in the Bible either, but a Greek word, which means catching away, is. And the Apostle Paul talks about this moment, this catching away. Look at, look at 1 Thessalonians 4, because he, he talks in 2 Thess Thessalonians 2, referencing saying that somebody's come to deceive them, that say the rapture's already taken place, and, and the, Lord's, the Lord's come, and he's brought everybody home, and we're still here. They're freaked out. They're alarmed. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, I, I, I want to read this to you. And you, I, I debated going back and forth. I was going to read this as a, as a beginning text, but I'm going to read it to you now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. What verse? 13, brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who've fallen asleep with him, according to the Lord's word. We tell you that we are still alive we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who've fallen asleep. Listen closely. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. That's a shofar. I just thought I'd throw that in. And the dead in Christ will rise first after that. We who are still alive and our left will be caught up together. That word, P-A-R-O-U-S-I-A, -A, verse is parousia, and it means to be caught up. That is the actual word that people use for the rapture. And so there's this moment, this incredible moment of the coming of the Lord, this incredible moment when heaven and earth come together and, and, and we're, we're caught, those that are still alive and are in Christ are going to be caught up together with him and with those who've gone before us and the dead in Christ will rise. I mean, it's this amazing moment. And there are some that we're telling the, the church in Thessalonica, and I, I lived there for about three months, told the church in Thessalonica that this had already taken place. So he begins to describe the, the timing of how it's all going to happen because he doesn't want them to be thrown off or out of, you know, stressed out, agitated, out of balance because someone suggested. How many of you ever believed a lie? I've had somebody tell me, tell me things that were not true that very much upset me. And then I began to respond and take action and then realize, wait, they weren't telling me the truth. And then I've had times where I heard things and actually I didn't hear it right. The church in Thessalonica, yeah, imagine that. 
The church in Thessalonica is having a problem and he's, he's correcting them. And he's saying, you don't have to worry about it because this is what has to happen first. And he lists these these signs, if you will, of his imminent return. And we've gone over them before, and we're going to look at them again tonight as a reminder. I love how it says in the text, I, I taught you these things when I was with you, and yet many times in many churches these things are not taught. And it's important for us to, to understand. It's, uh, there are many who have made false predictions and declared his return. And uh, we've taught on that before, Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, some call them a Christian cult. That They are set on, the, on a particular day of worship. I don't believe they're a Christian cult, but they have gone down the wrong trail a number of times in an instance called uh, the Great Disappointment. That's a history. You can go look it up. The Great Disappointment, the Seventh-day Adventists, they declared that Jesus was going to come in this particular year. It's in my notes. You want to you hear it? It's uh, October 21st, 1843 to October, 20, October 22nd, 1844, or 18, October 21, 1843, one year to 1844, Jesus is going to come. Well, on October 22nd, it was significantly disappointing that they were all still there. And so what happened is they spiritualized it, not unlike Jehovah's Witnesses in 1874, calculating the return of Christ. Listen, don't let anybody calculate the return of Christ and tell you when that is. But there are, si there are clear signs. Them saying, I know when he's coming. You're like, okay, you just stay over there. I know the date. No, you don't. But we know that, come on, red in the morning, sailor take warning. Red at night, sailor's delight. Jesus says you can discern the, 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 the weather, but you don't know the seasons and times. You don't know the times. There is clear indication of when the Lord's going to return. And that's in about 20 minutes when we blow the shofar. Amen. No, I'm, I, I'm teasing. Charles Russell, 1874, he declared that the Lord is returning, the kingdom is coming. They recalculated that to make it 1914, I guess. They had a calculation error. Judge Rutherford declared that on October 1st, 1914, that the Lord is coming. So October 1st, 1914 comes. How many of you know this a few years ago? And when it came and went on October 2nd, he said, it happened. But it was invisible. Right. And so the same kind of nonsense happened here with Thess the Thessalonian, the church in Thessalonica. And, and there's all kinds of people that prognosticate and make all kinds of nonsensical Predictions, and you should never do that. But at the same time, there is clear evidence of when the Lord's going to return. There's clear evidence of when the rapture is going to take place. Now, there's the rapture of the church and then his return to the earth. It's two really separate things. And uh, we've taught you that before. I just want to speak specifically about these signs that Paul shares here about the end. Because you don't want to be deceived. There's two things that take place. And you can look at verse uh, 3. Let no one deceive you. By any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away. Everybody say falling away. Okay, that's called the apostasy. Everybody write apostasy. And I think we, we have it in the notes right there. Apostasy. And they're almost there. They're soon coming. In the name of, yes. Everybody say apostasy. Apostasy means falling away. That's what that means. The, the, the good news about that, if there's going to be a great apostasy, there has to be a great ingathering. And I'm, I don't think we've had that just yet. The fullness of the Gentiles, I believe, is still ahead. Yes. Now, some might argue that, but there's a great falling away. Rebellion is what the NIV uses. But we get the word apostasy. 
Similar phrase is used by Paul in 1 Timothy 4.1. In the last days, some will turn away from the faith. Turning away from the faith. Jews understood that when somebody turned away from the faith, they were no longer a Jew. They no longer loved God. They no longer served God. It's very clear what Paul's saying. And Hebrews, the book of Hebrews says, see to it that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart and turns from the living God. You can turn from the Lord. Everybody say, don't do it. Come on, bump your neighbor and say, don't turn from the Lord. Come bump your other neighbor and say, don't do it, don't turn. So he's saying there's going to be this falling away. In fact, Acts chapter 21 and verse 21, Paul's acu- the Jews accuse Paul of turning away from the books of Moses. You can go look at that. And that's what he's talking about. He's talking about this turning away. The second thing is the lawless, the lawless one of the man of sin. There we go. The man of sin will appear. 1 John 3, 4 speaks of this lawless one, of the man of sin. It's also talked about in the book of Daniel, and I've taught you that at previous times also. The man of lawlessness is defined. Verse 4, he will oppose God. What's he going to do? He's going to oppose God. Wow, that's intense. And he'll be supernaturally empowered by Satan. He'll exalt himself over everything that is called God. He makes his own rules. He doesn't submit to God. He'll make decisions of what's right and wrong. It's kind of what's happening now. No longer man or woman. You know, they they, they actually, people can't define what a woman is now. They have whole politicians that will not define what a woman is because it, it polarizes you. I've been polarized long ago. I have every intention of staying polarized. I believe God's word. There is a man, and there is a woman, and it shows it in your genes. You can can test if you're not sure. There's a number of ways to do that. Go ahead and say, ha, 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 ha. Okay. But that's what's happening today. You say, has the Antichrist been revealed yet? I don't believe so. Is he alive? Most likely. And we certainly have an Antichrist spirit that's happening. Everything you see here, you'll see happening around the earth. And unfortunately, it seems that America is leading the way. Verse 4, he'll oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship. So he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, some would say that in order for the return, for the rapture and for the eminent return of Christ to happen, that there has to be, the temple has to be rebuilt. This is, this is where that red heifer thing gets pretty intense. So the temple has to rebuild the third temple. You say, well, it can't be rebuilt because the temple mount is taken up by the dome of the rock. They put, they put the, the, the uh, one of the, the sacred places in Islam is this dome or the rock of where Abraham, if I got it right, sacrificed, went to sacrifice Isaac. It's this sacred rock, and it's on the Temple Mount. And if you can get into the, into the dome of the rock and go down, you can see the rock. It's, it's closed off to Gentiles and Jews, as I understand it. There's a movie that was out where... So supernatural, so the fingerprint of God or something, and they go in and they actually see it and record it. So some say, well, you can't rebuild the temple if that's there. Well, that, that could be destroyed and removed, and they could build the temple, possibly. Or, or perhaps there's the, the actual location of the temple is over just a little bit. We don't really know. And if somebody said, well, if the temple worship is taking place, that has to take place in order for the, the Antichrist to declare himself to be God. Very possibly. Possibly there's a number of different ways to look at it. But this red heifer thing, they had no red heifers. We said, what do they need a red heifer for? They had these red heifers or an, or an aspect of Levitical law for the cleansing of the priests. And if you don't have red heifer, I mean a heifer, it's a cow. It's an all red cow, a perfectly red cow. And they could find none. They, they're like the gene pool of red cows was extinct. Until some devout Texan. God bless Texas. Some devout Texan. (laughs) Look at that. Some devout Texan. 
have five red heifers and they're in Israel right now. And so they're, they're, you know, making preparations for the building of the third temple, just kind of interesting. You'll see throughout history that they, this, those with the Antichrist spirit would do the same thing. Caliglia attempt, Caliglia attempted to put his image up in the temple at 40 AD and he was killed before he could. The phrase suggests, as I said, the building, rebuilding of the temple. There's another way to look at it. Paul also calls the temple, uh, your own body is the temple of, the, of God also. There's a number of different ways. You have to do numerous gymnastics to figure it out. And the truth is, no one knows exactly what is being said, except the, the Apostle Paul, I suppose, and the Lord. For us, there's some mystery involved here. Somehow, the Antichrist figure comes and, and becomes a God figure. And in the book of Daniel, again, he, he talks about that. There is many who's done the same thing. And in actual fact, without going, I have a lot of history here about the mark of the beast and those who declare themselves to be God. All throughout history, there have been those who had an antichrist spirit and were considered to be the antichrist. And it is proven that they were not. Even some emperors said that you have to take the mark and to have this mark and to worship him. And in order, if you don't do that, then you can't buy or sell. Does that sound familiar? Ecclesiastes says that which has been will be again. History will repeat itself. All of those things are types and shadows. And there will come a time. There will come a time when you'll have to take a mark to buy or sell. Now, some have said that that was the vaccine, and I don't believe that to be true. Uh, there is some interesting things about, um, um, trying to remember the name of it. Well, there's some interesting markers that say that that, that technology is already out there. You just want to be very careful to not take the mark. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I think uh, Tiff Shuttlesworth will be here with us uh, this coming week talked about can you take the mark of the beast by accident and to summarize that message I don't believe so some have suggested that there are people in leadership that are the antichrist now let me just say that if you see the particular leader get shot in the head or wounded in the head dies and then gets up that's probably the antichrist <laughs> okay I'm not kidding all right. In conjunction with the Antichrist, Satan will do counterfeit miracles. Verse 9. Are you guys okay? You guys are like, I want to blow the shofar. I want to blow the shofar. We will. Relax. I got I to gotta show this moment first. So I, 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 had, I had my shofar, and it's in this bag. And, and, um, and I, I put it over my shoulder. And, um, and it matches my outfit. And I, I uh, yeah. And as I'm going out to my car with the, all these chauffeurs over my shoulder, I, the joy of the Lord hit me. I started laughing. I'm like, oh my God, I've become that guy. I've become that guy. I'm that, I'm that guy with a chauffeur. I know you guys, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying, wow. You're like, finally, hallelujah, chauffeur, pastor. All right. All right, man. All right, it's an inside joke. Don Ho with a shofar. Thank you, Pastor Karen. Verse 9. Go to look at verse 9. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. Verse 10. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. Literally, Satan has power. Satan has power. Verse 5, don't you remember when I was with you and how I used to tell you these things? Wow. Look at, look at verse 6. And now you know what is holding him back. That verse, man, that verse is, 
a very challenging verse. It is one of the most challenging verses in all of Scripture. Do you all see it? Underline it. Highlight it on your phone, your device, your iPad, your onion skin paper. Now you know what is holding him back. Am I like, uh, no, I don't know what's holding him back. Can you tell me what's holding him back? And, and really, it's a bit of a mystery. But apparently, they knew. Then he had told them. But it, to us, we're not quite sure. We don't know what he told them. This verse has caused more writing and, and, uh, and arguments over time, over, the, over history than just about anything else. The church knows. Everybody say the church knows. The church knows what's, what's holding the Antichrist back from being revealed at the proper time. So let's talk about that. Verse 7. Look at verse 7. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he's taken out of the way. So what we, know, what we know is that the restraint, there's some force at work, and maybe it's not a force, it's, it's a he, actually. He is restraining him. So the restrainer is at work now, and it's referred to he. But who's he? So at the right time, right in your notes, the right time restraint will be removed. You have that in your notes? You might not. Restraint will be removed, and the result will be the releasing of the finer t- final timetable of the Lord. But we don't know who he is. But some say it's the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Spirit is no longer here, then the restraining is released and the Antichrist is revealed. Well, why would the Holy Spirit no longer be here? Because the rapture is taking place. Other people say it's not just the Holy Spirit, but it's the church. And so the church is no longer there. We don't know. The Holy Spirit in the work of the church, it could be God who is restraining until the work of the church is done. Do you know what the work of the church is? To reach every nation, tribe, and tongue with the glorious gospel of the kingdom of God. That is the work of the church. That's why we're visiting every single home in the state. And I I would to God that every church would get doing it. we've We've got to do what God called us to do. That's why we sent off missionaries. That's why we're planting churches, because that's what we've been called to do. So it could be that God is, is, is the one who's restraining until the church can fit us to task of preaching the gospel all over the world. It's not been, there are unreached people groups. I think Pia, our beloved Pia and, and Rick, they, they, they told me that there's a hundred unreached people groups in Indonesia. Who's going to reach them? We are. So it could be that God's restraining until everybody's reached and then they have no excuse. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, the gospel will be preached for the whole earth as a witness, and then the end will come. Then the what? The end will come. When? After the gospel is preached. 2 Peter 3 and 12. You should look what I'm looking at here, Pastor Kirsten. Everybody's like silver dollar eyeballs. You'd be like, oh my gosh, this is really wow. Can we just blow the show far and end the service? 2 Peter 3, 12. As you look forward to the to the day of God and speed it's coming. That's amazing. You can hasten, Pastor Josh's son's name is Hasten. You know why they called him Hasten? Because the King James says, hasten his coming. So they named his son, he named his only son Hasten, which is a beautiful thing. Do you know the work of the church or the way that we live can actually hurry the timetable up of God? You serve God, love God with all your heart, preach the gospel, it can quicken his return. It says in the book of Revelation, the spirit and the bride have made themselves ready. Some people think it's just God. Oh, no, 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 it's not just God. It's God moving through you, moving through me, us having a passion, us making ourselves ready. He's coming for a spot. I might preach in a second. He's coming for a spotless bride. He's not coming for some haggard, beaten church that waves a white flag of surrender. No, we're, we're going out full of fire. Can somebody say amen? We're the victorious church. Say it. We are the victorious church. We're the eternal victorious church, I should say. I should probably preach on that. Another idea or a third idea is God is restraining work through government. 
So that, that's why it's so fascinating to me, these idiots. Did I say that? I'm not looking at Pastor Karen. These idiots that think that you can just defund all the police. You're being, you're being used by an antichrist spirit. The police are racist. I'm sure there are some racist police. You can't get rid of government. Government is God's idea. Please hear me. I know maybe you've been through some things and things happened to you that made you perhaps bitter towards government leadership. And I know there's corruption, but God is the author of government and the government will be upon his shoulders. It is his idea. Read Romans 13. So you can't, def you don't go defunding and removing government because you know what'll happen? What's happening in New Orleans right now. And in New Orleans right now is the number one murder, murder capital of the world, I think I read today. And they can't find police. So they can't, there's not enough police. So they're, they're actually recruiting civilians that are willing and they're training them to run call centers and to help out so that those that are police officers who are trained can get out of call centers to stop the murders happening all over the streets of New Orleans. Defund, you're an idiot. Did I, did I say you have the, uh, op I will, you're an idiot. You have the operate. <laughs> you actually, actually, you're deceived and you have the spirit of antichrist working in you and you need to stop. So the restrainer could be God operating through government. And I understand, please, I understand there is corrupt government. But Romans 13 talks about the fact that government is set up by God to resist and restrain evil. And if removed, then it could be then that the Antichrist appears. It's, it, we're not sure which one it is. Not sure. The secret power of the Antichrist is already at work. And you can read through 1 John 2 and 18. Oh, my It's only 7.05. We might as well go ahead and throttle this thing. Go to 1 John. Here comes the throttling. 1 John 2.18, dear children, this is the last hour. I mean, if he's writing to them, saying that this is the last hour, I mean, what hour are we in? It would be the continued last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it's the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us, but their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is a liar? Verse 22. You all there? Verse 22. Who is a liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. There are many groups today that are Antichrist groups. Christian science is an Antichrist group. The Unity Church is an antichrist group. Let's have a praise break. Just come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Wow. Gosh, you're kind of drawing some lines in the sand. I hope so, because I don't want you out there. Christian science is not of God. Go to 1 John 3. Uh, 1 John 4, 3. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. But the spirit of the Antichrist, which you've heard is coming, even now is in the world. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. That's why when you see people performing signs and wonders and miracles, and there's many. You're not finding me go to some spiritist to try to get healing. I don't care if, if Bubba Gump and your auntie and everybody you know that had some disease went to this person and they, 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 they played with some bones and they waved their hand and they got healed. I would especially not go. It does, listen, healing comes from God. And, and the devil also does counterfeit signs, wonders, and miracles so that he can deceive even the elect. 
if someone comes to manifest a sign, a wonder, a miracle, a prophecy, and they do not declare Jesus Christ as Lord, and you do not listen, stay away. Because that is an antichrist spirit. Why will the antichrist, why will the antichrist come is explained in the work of Satan's ultimate rebellions against God. He tries to take as many people to hell with him as he, as he can. And it's because people refuse to believe the truth. Look at verse 10. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. When you turn from the truth, your heart gets, hard, your heart gets harder and harder. And God confirms their decision and sends them a powerful delusion. This is what the text says. Go to Romans chapter 1. The text says that in verse 11, for those of you paying attention. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. This is what is happening in the media. This is what is happening all around America. Man, I, I am getting more and more fired up here. We, you have to learn to stay. I don't like taking sides. You better pick one now. Said, I, I don't like making distinctions. You better learn to make one, honey. God's going to make some distinctions. He's going to decide between goats and sheep. He's going to decide who are his and whose aren't. And you decide by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then you live for him all of your life. And don't be deceived. Watch out. Come on, somebody say watch out. Watch out. Oh, it goes on and on and there's so much there. God's speaking to us tonight before we blow the shofars and we get raptured on out of here. I'm joking, but who knows? Don't, don't cave in. Don't succumb to a spirit of antichrist that's already in the world. The murder of the unborn is straight from hell. They overthrow it. Roe versus Wade. Glory to God. What a victory. Now our states need to do something. And for the love of God, our governor and whoever's in charge there and all those that are making decisions in the state of Alaska, better, they better do something. Because Alaskans are not for abortion. There's a few select nut jobs in Juneau and different places that are, but I'm just saying mostly. There's an antichrist spirit. And if you're for the murder of the unborn, it's because you're uninformed, wounded, deceived to some degree. The redefining of marriage. The redefining of, of man and woman. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that we're... The, I mean, pronouns. What pronouns do you use? Um, what? You know, that, 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 you go down... So you go to visit the lower 48. It's just huge. And it's moving up here. We need a revival. We need an awakening in America. And then other nations follow our lead. It's horrible. The word of the Lord is being removed. The word of the Lord is being removed from the high places of our land. We need to put it back. It needs to get back in your house. It needs to get in your heart. I've said it so before. I've said it before. The people got so bent out of shape when they were taking the Ten Commandments off the Capitol Rotunda and, and removing things from courthouses. It'd be pretty hard to remove the Ten Commandments from the Supreme Court. It's emblazoned in, in, in marble, carved, and you'd have to rip the whole thing down. You have to chisel. You know how much of Washington, D.C. you have to chisel away to get rid of the word? I mean, you have to like destroy it. Has anybody ever been to DC? You, you, you go to, the, you go to uh, Abraham Lincoln's memorial, it's scripture all over the thing. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna get out a, a jackhammer and, and, and jackhammer all the, ins are, you gonna, are you gonna cover it over? Maybe, maybe they will. But you, that's what you'd have to do. So many people get upset when in fact they took the word of the Lord out of their own hearts, out of their own homes, generations ago. Most people don't have the Ten Commandments hanging in their house. You should teach your kid the Ten Commandments. And get bent out of shape when it's removed as you're on your sixth beer, watching the game, putting your feet up, declaring the idiocy of some quarterback 
When you're living like twice the son of hell, pointing the finger at those, you, you, oh my goodness, I, am I? The New Age movement, and Hinduism, Buddhism, power of media controlling people's minds. You have to be careful what you watch and what you listen to. I mean, I, I, I just think they're all liars. There's so much out there, you just don't know what's what. Thank God we have the word, thank God, you know, until they try to take that away. Let's have a praise break. It feels pretty intense in here at 713. Lift, don't worry. Let's blow the show for it. We will. Just, come on, just lift your voice. Hey, 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 come on. Come on, come on. Thank God you're in church on a Sunday night. Thank God we have a Sunday night. Thank God we're here worshiping God, preaching the word. Come on. Zion. I was talking to a pastor and he said, well, people don't want to come to this. Is, this is like last week. We're not on a Sunday night because, well, you know, it's like nobody's going to come. That's why they're not coming. Open the thing. Preach. Preach to you, your wife, and your kids. We've said it before and I got it from Dr. Morocco. I'll always have a Sunday night. And if it's just me and my family that I'm preaching to you on a Sunday night, we will always have a Sunday night. And so they said, when I got here, you can't do Sunday night in Alaska. Alaska, you don't want to come Sunday night. He ain't going to come on Sunday night. He ain't coming. Nobody coming. Well, once again, welcome to Sunday night. Bump the hundreds of people that are here and say hi to nobody next to you. Go ahead, say hi to nobody. Come on, say hi to the other nobody on the other side. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. All right. Yeah. Let me continue from my soapbox. There's good news, and uh, I said it earlier, you can't have a great apostasy without a great revival. And I believe that we're heading into that. And I believe that you're some of the first fruits of a great revival, a great awakening. We really need a reformation. We don't need a revival. We don't need a three-day meeting. That we, don't need a, we don't need a series of meetings or a little localized outpouring that lasts for five or six years like Brownsville. Thank God for Brownsville, not knocking it. Wish I had gone. Didn't get to go. My mother went. I heard lots of stories about how people were there in Brownsville and the outpouring. Thank God for the Toronto blessing. Thank God for Rodney Howard Brown and different outpourings that took place of which we've been deeply affected by. What we need is a transformation of our society. Can you hear me in the lobby? A transformation of society. Can you hear me in the lobby now? How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. We need a transformation of society. That's what we need. And that will happen by you transforming your life. By me, my, me, I've been transformed. And I plan on having more transforming touches by God. And Pastor Karen said, amen. I was talking to my brother and I, when he first came to the Lord and I asked him this. I asked him, you know, when we were growing up and we were kids and everything, like, yeah. I said, you know, when you think about somebody, I wonder what they're going to be and whatever they're going to do and. He said, yeah. I said, you know, I'm just curious as my brother, you know, did you imagine that I would be doing? He said, what? No, no. You're not even close to who you were. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, you were insecure. You were nervous. You were unsure of yourself. I don't know what happened to you, man. You're like, man. And I just thought, oh, I, I got born again. I've been transformed. Somebody said, why would you build such a big building? Because we need more space. And we did it at basically 25 cents on the dollar. That thing is valued so much over what we've built it for. And we didn't build it for an investment, although it is a good one. We built it so that we could house the coming outpouring and revival. Awakening, I should say. An awakening. Everybody say an awakening. All right. So you can't have a great of falling away unless you have an awakening. Now's the time to repent. Yeah. Now. You don't wait till tomorrow. I'm not ready to come to the Lord. I, I'm reminded of a friend of mine who preached a youth 
series of youth meetings and was so pressed to give an altar call at the end that people would be saved. And he just, the Lord wouldn't let him up. He said, there's one more, there's one more. Well, there was one more kid that day that had in his mind, he was a high school student, that he's gonna go out and just do what he wanted to do that night. He's gonna go to a party, he's gonna meet up with his girlfriend who didn't come to church, gonna go out and do that thing. Well, he died that night. You know, no one plans on dying tonight. No one has plans. Oh yeah, tonight's tonight. I mean, if God reveals to you when you're gonna go, that really is something. All of us are going to go at one time, at some point. May you, may you live a full life and be taken in strength. That's what I'm planning on. That's what I pray. That's what I declare. That, that's, I, that's what I agree for. But you are not promised another, man, another night. And in actual fact, in view of this scripture and many others, tonight could be the rapture. Absolutely. You say, well, there's, there's things that haven't happened. By our estimation, very possibly true. You say, the fullness of the Gentiles, that happened. Possibly that's true. You say, there hasn't been a great, great awakening. We see very limitedly. We don't really know. I said, we don't really know. Would you get right with God before we blow the shofars? Would you? Would you? It'd be a good idea. If you're not right with God, don't leave this place in that condition. Don't, don't, don't do it. Give your life to Christ on this Rosh Hashanah. This New Year's. New Year begins right now here in Alaska as the sun goes down according to God's appointed days and feasts and And if you're not right with God, won't you give your heart to Jesus for the first time? Or maybe, maybe you need to make a recommitment. I had a dream. And I started this series, and, and the series comes from the dream. It's a three-part series. I have not preached a third message yet. I had the dream over a year ago. And in my dream, I'm standing in the earth and I see all of humanity, and some of you have heard this, but I'll, I'll just share it again. And I know absolutely that I have moments before it's over, before all of time as we know it is over, and I'm going to die. And I see a sea of people, the curvature of the earth, just kind of lose them. And, I, and when I realize this is it, this is it, this is it. This is it. I, I laid hands on myself. I'm like, God, is there anything, anything, anything else? I, is there anything I need to deal with? And the Lord showed me something, which is private. I had a dream within a dream. And I took care of that. And I, I come out of that and I look to the east and there is this bright, brighter than the sun coming across the earth and we're gone, we're gone. There's no pain, there's nothing. I honestly don't know if it was a nuclear explosion or the rapture or what, I don't know. I'm honestly don't know. And I'm instantly in heaven and I'm in heaven and there's an angel talking to me without using words, communicating directly to me. And, uh, I don't think I've shared this part, but I, but I felt led, I feel led to share it right now. He had a pearl, large pearl. And he pushed it at me and it came across and went into my spirit and something changed in me. I can't really describe to you what that was like. And then I saw all these multitudes of people like on a choir riser. I could see all of their faces. And I saw these assignments be given out for the millennial reign. Now, this, when you have dreams, you need to match them up with Scripture. So everything I'm telling you right now, you can't contradict to say that isn't in Scripture. There might be some missing parts. I mean, where, where is the judgment seat and all of that? 
there, are, there is a millennial reign. You are going to rule and reign with Christ forever if you're born again. And that's, you're not going to be, I said it jokingly before, but I'll say it again. You're going to be playing some gold harp with a little diaper on. Bring, flying across with cute little wings, just worshiping God the rest of your life. No, you're going to have an assignment. There's going to be a new heaven, a new earth, and you're going to be in it. And you're going to be, you're going to be ruling and judging angels. I mean, you're, you're very significant to the economy of God. Did you know that? You're going to redeem, be redeemed. You're going to get a glorified body. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. But it's glorified. Come on, say, yes, God. <laughs> Can I have a deposit of that? Amen. And I saw these assignments, and one specific assignment, I saw, I saw someone, and uh, I saw this assignment being given, and it was some of the nations in Africa. And they were given the assignment, and I, and I just sat there be, just blown away. And I woke up, and the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, the end is the beginning. I thought, ooh, see, this is not it. There will come an end. For those who are born again, it'll be a beginning. Those who are not born again, it will be the end. And then there's the lake of fire that was never created for you, for me. No, it's created for the devil and his minions. But if the one sin, the one sin that God will not, cannot forgive you of, there's only one. Want to know what the one sin is? There's only one. The one sin that he cannot forgive you of is you not receiving his gift, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. So on this Rosh Hashanah, with every head bowed and every eye closed and people praying, if you've never given your life to Christ, won't you do it today? Won't you do it tonight? Won't you? Don't play religious games. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. This could be the moment. This, this could be it. Tonight could be the final night. Can you imagine if we blew these trumpets and then whoosh, we get raptured out of here and there's a handful of people still here? We would know that you didn't pray. You say, well, I'm, I'm not 100% for God. Well, for, for the love of God, get, change that. What are, you, what are you waiting for? Come on, he brings some guy in a Don Ho outfit, bald-headed, preaching, spitting everywhere, to get up in your grill to tell you, don't be an idiot. You must be born again. You must be born again. You must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There is no other way to be forgiven of your sin. There is no other way to make it to heaven. There is no other way. And the Antichrist spirit at work in the earth is working hard to get you offended and to get you believing the lie and being deceived. This is the moment to get right with God because you're not promised not one more. This is your last service, as far as you know. Oh, I hope there's more. I'm planning for more, but I'm living like this is it. This could be the last time I ever preach to you right now. My God. I'm talking to that one who's been playing church. I'm talking to the one. I know many have come on a Sunday night. I mean, you, you want to hear the word. You want to be here. You want to worship. You love his presence. You love his people. You love the word. But I'm speaking to that one who, who's not really been born again, that one who's not really made a decision. I'm talking to you. But I know I'm pushing. I know it's intense. But when death and hell are on the line, I think that's pretty intense. Examine your heart all across this place. If you, you want to get right with God, first time, or you want to recommit because you drifted, God doesn't move, you do. We move, he doesn't move. He's unchangeable, he's immutable. He's the same, yesterday, today, forever. He's a God of love, and in love there's justice. And when time is over, the decision that you made in time will be fixed in eternity. You can't change your mind after you're dead. 
Decisions in eternity stay in eternity. That's why Lucifer, when he said, I'll ascend to the sides of the north, that's a fixed decision. He rebelled and he was thrown, hurled to the earth. It's a fixed decision. The decision you make when time is no more and you cross over, that's it. So what decision have you made? Won't you give your heart to Jesus for the first time or make a recommitment every head bowed every eye closed to intercessors praying. That's you tonight online here in the sanctuary. Perhaps those listening even in the future. Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. Why they still allow us to broadcast the truth. If you're not right with God, get right with him tonight. On the count of three, if that's you, you want to get right with Jesus, lift your hand to heaven. One. Yeah, you can do it early if you want to. One. Two. Three. Lift your hand high. All right. Now you all look at me. That's a lot of hands. A whole lot of hands. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to worship God. And I want you to get out from your seat. I never want to embarrass anybody. That's not why we're here. We don't, we want to keep people's dignity. We want to protect your dignity. We want to honor you. But we do have a theory based on the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who said this. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. But if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you. If you raised your hand or you didn't and you meant business with God and you know you need to be forgiven to give your life to Christ for the first time or you want to make a recommitment because you're not as on fire as you used to be. As soon as Minister Toby begins to sing, come on, stand up all across this place. As soon as he begins to sing, you step out from where you are and you meet me right here. There'll be, there's a lot of hands that went up. There'll be people coming with you. You just, it's going to require courage. You acquire it. And come on up and get right with Jesus. You ready? Come on. Holy is the Lord. Come on. on oh my God, so many hands. Glory fills the temple. Holy come all the way up front. On as close to my hand as you can. High. My God. Holy is the Lord. Come all the way up front. Come all the way in here. Come as close to the front as you can. Holy is the Lord. On high. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Your glory fills the temple. Holy is the Lord. Come on, come. Come all the way up. Come all the way up. We're joining with the elders. Holy is the Lord. Come on, sing with us. Sing to him. Holy is the Lord.
holy is the Lord on high. Holy. Holy is the Lord on high. We're joining with the elders. Holy is the Lord on high. I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer. I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me. Maybe you've prayed this before. Maybe you haven't. I've had people say, you know, I've prayed that prayer a lot of times and nothing happened. And I would then say to that person that you've not been transformed because I believe a true repentance hasn't really taken place. When you come to understand that your sin crucified Jesus and you own that, it's not like I just, it's not magic. We don't believe in magic. We believe in truth. And the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. What that means is that you believe that he was crucified because that's what you deserve. You deserve death. I deserve death apart from Christ. All of us deserve judgment. He became, was judged for you and I. The Bible says in the book of Romans, he's a propitiation for our sin. The word propitiation means to avert wrath. You deserve wrath because you've lied, you've stolen, you've cheated. You've broken the commandments of God. All of us have. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal life. But repentance is acknowledging the fact that you deserve death. All of us do. But don't stay there. Receive forgiveness. Receive redemption. Receive propitiation. Receive His death instead of yours. And receive new life. Salvation being born again. That is true Christianity. We're going to pray a prayer. Pray it and mean it with all your heart. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place, to rise again from the grave for me. Forgive me of all of my sin and come into my life. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. I'm sorry. Write my name in your book in heaven and use me for the purpose for which I was created. Take out the heart of stone and give me a new heart. Make me new now. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer.